normal stuff. Um, NRL round 12. Obviously, a lot of players backing up here from Origin. Um, and we'll start with the Raiders, who beat the C- Manly Sea Eagles 30 points to 18. I'm not sure if anyone had any bets on this one, but Brett Hodgson grabbed a try, and Elliot Whitehead did too. He also ran for 106 metres. So, great going by both our British players there. Uh, Warriors, they won 36 points to 18 over the Brisbane Broncos. They're slumped now down to fourth in the table, and on a, on a bit of a losing run, Jack Reed did play for the Broncos, but that didn't make much difference. The Cowboys, um, they were they they bounced back, um, having their big boys back in the middle of the field. Obviously, Morgan missed because of the concussion he picked up in Origin, but JT was there pulling the strings, and it, it was a pretty easy win for the Cowboys. Forty six points to sixteen over the Newcastle Knights. The Melbourne Storm, they they went through the gears after a, a good start by the Penrith Panthers in this game, but they finished out twenty four to six winners over Penrith, and they they are joint top of the table just off it on points difference. The Roosters, they won thirty two points to eighteen over the West Tigers, uh, sorry the Rabbitohs, um, that should say not the Roosters. I can't read my own rundowns. Tom one hundred seventy two, Tom Burgess one hundred seventy two meters. Sam Burgess. I've, monstrous 260 metres and 53 tackles as uh, the Rabbitohs get a win under their belts again and then finally Monday's game saw Tom's Sharks beat the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs 20 points to 18 James Graham with 225 metres his knock was not enough for the Doggies as the Sharks stay t- uh, go top stay there with the Storm just behind them on points difference in an exciting week of NRL action. Then finally, and probably even more exciting than any of that so far, we get to the Brentwood Eels in our normal roundup of what those boys have been up to. This week, the under-13s beat the... God, there's going to be some pronunciation issues here, but the Rutlish Raiders, 34 points to 16 to stay top of their league. The under-15s recorded a 24 points to nil victory over the South and Spartans, so age groups do well. Open age, not so great, unfortunately. They lost to Hemel Hempstead in the league, 58 points to 24. But Aaron, our... Uh, are in at the Brentwood Eels over there. He travelled over to France with his under-14s team to play in a French Rugby League Federation organised under-15s Rugby League tournament on the outskirts of Paris. The Oxford Cavaliers also entered a team in that tournament. That's great to hear. First up, the Eels played a strong Catalan A-team. A physical encounter saw the Dragons lead by two tries at half-time. The Eels piled on the pressure in the second half, going close to unlocking their defence on several occasions. Then, in the final minute, Catalan kicked a penalty to put the game out of reach. It did finally end Catalan's side 12, Brentwood Eels nil. Then the Eels played against a Paris representative team. Another big, powerful side. Incredible defence from the Eels turned the game into a real arm wrestle with chances for both sides. Then in the final minutes, Paris found a gap, sliding over the stripe to score. Paris origin team 4, Brentwood Eels nil. Um, this place yield in the bronze final against another team that had travelled up from Perpignan, St Estev, who who during the tournament had suffered a few injuries, but Carl had kindly lent them their four best players for this uh, plate final. Um, when the Catalan stand off with the beard and tattoos <laughs> tied down to over the scoring, Aaron said he feared the worst, but then the Eels clicked into gear, playing their best rugby of the day, and then there was tries from Wiseman, Chapman, Smith and Davies. The boys secured a fantastic victory and some silverware in the process. Oxford made it to the silver final, where they lost to the Paris Origin team that had narrowly, narrowly defeated the Eels. The final scoring that one was Paris 26, the Cavaliers 10. In the final, it was Catalan A against Catalan B in the gold final. It saw the Catalan A team win the tournament. What Aaron summed up was, all in all, an amazing four-day tour to France. Playing against lads a year older from Perpignan, the heartlands of French Rugby League, was a great challenge and an experience the players will never forget. Uh, We will be putting some pictures up on our Facebook that Aaron provided us from the weekend. And... You know, what they're getting up to down there in Brentwood with the tournaments they seem to be getting involved in um, is really great to see. And, um, you know, great work from the boys winning that final game after a couple of tough outings. And obviously, uh, really good to see Oxford getting over there too. And Aaron had some great things to say about how the whole event was organised and run by the French Federation. So uh, hats off to everyone involved. as It seems to be a weekly occurrence with, uh, with what's going on down in Brentwood. So brilliant. Now I will uh, move on to predictions and previews with Tom on board again. (music) 
Right, so now we look ahead to round 18 of Super League, and Tom is back in play for this. Tom, with your predictions, welcome back. Hello, hello everyone. Happy to be back. <laughs> They've missed you for all of, all of seven or eight minutes, Max. <laughs> <laughs> much longer. It really does. Okay, Tom, so we're going to start with um, Castleford versus Widnes this week. What say you? Oh, this is this is probably, looking down the list of fixtures, one of the easier ones to predict. I just don't see Widnes being able to go to, to the Vendor Jungle and get a result here. Castleford, although they've, so, they've, they've had some scratchy form kind of recently, the way that they're playing away on the field and, and the quality they've got across the board just tells me that they're going to be too strong for winning this. I've got for Catholic to buy that 16 on this one. I'm going to say uh, 3 2 16 in favour of the four. OK, that's pretty close to what I've gone, actually, as well. Uh, I've gone 28-14, but I think this can range from anything from a two-score win to a five-score win for um, for Castleford if they get it right. Because witness, I'm just... They're just not executing enough in every facet of the game at the moment from what I've seen from them. Um, possibly their only saving grace in this one is is Castleford's front row isn't in peak health at the moment, but they get Lon Patrick back in this one that they missed last week, and even if the front row isn't firing, the second row will, will cause some trouble to everyone. 28-14, my score. Next up, it's um, Hull Kingston Rovers versus Wigan Warriors. Tom, what say you on this one? Well, when, when you emailed me through the rundown on Sunday night, I was tempted to go with a KR win. I do think it's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be a big result for Wigan, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip Wigan by six points. I'm going to go 24-18. I think KR will be imbued with a new confidence after the result that they had last week against Wakefield. I think we're going to kind of um, shake it around morale-wise, and I think that will serve to bring these two teams together in terms of scoreline. But I'm going to go for Wigan. Um, I can't. I need to start throwing some curveballs to try and catch you up a little bit, but I can't throw a curveball on this. I'm going to go Wigan by 6, 24, 18. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're saying some sensible things there. I'm going to go 30 points to 20 in favour of Wigan. I think the the problem for Hulk KR in this one is whilst they've got some key players back and they showed a bit of um, attacking flair against against Wakefield. With, with all due respect to Wakefield, the Wigan defence is is a sort of different animal. And whilst yeah, you question some of, some issues inside the club at Wigan, I'm not sure how much it'll affect the actual team that's out on the field. Um, come come. Friday night, so 30 points to 20 in favour of my boys. Uh, I won't be making the long trip over for this one. It's it's the wife's birthday weekend coming up, so uh, I don't oh, think... Really? I don't this think... This is the sort of thing that normally we would talk about on the show. Have you got any, have you got any plans? Well, we're going to watch um, we're going to watch Wuthering Heights at Livingham Hall. So th- that should be a joy. And uh, we're going out for a, like a... a <laughs> Yeah, it will be good. Um, y- y- we're going to what we're going for a, like a family meal as well. So yeah, pl- plenty going on. But I don't think I'd get away with you know not rocking up back home till probably one ish on the uh, on Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. So so I'm, I'm having to give this one a miss this time around. Um, yeah, moving on to Leeds versus Salford. This for me was probably the second toughest to pick of the round, um, just because. I think Leeds are are ready to be a bit tougher. Think so. Well, they were tougher against Catalan more markedly than they were the week before against Warrington, and if and, and they're at home again for a second week in a row, so you'd think there's there's going to be I don't know something settled there. I suppose depending on whether Galloway's available and if anyone comes back for them, they do have a decimated squad, but. Also on that side of things, Salford are, are possibly going to be missing Dobson, who left the game injured against Wigan, and you know that the, the, so that means there's players missing both ways. There was also um, O'Brien was missing last week, and that young kid Williams came in and played a little bit of the game at fullback, but um, not not a lot of the game at fullback. Uh, he, he went back off 
uh, whilst Junior Sao was fit again to return to the pitch. But there's some interesting questions there. Evels, of course, will return for Salford. And I think that's kind of why I'm edging just for a Salford win. 26-22. What about you, Tom? Do you know what? I thought you were going to go Leeds. I thought you were going to go Leeds. I was that teasing. going to be my opportunity to fill a curveball and, um, and try and close some points back up on you. I mean, I'm almost inclined now that I've heard you talk such a good game and, and, and say all the things I was about to say to go for a Leeds win just to kind of give myself the option to pull the points back. But honestly, I can't bring myself to pick a game Salford in this one. As, as strange as that is, for everything you've just at least disseminated, the, the things are going from back to worse with Leeds this week with, with Zach Hardacre's transfer request and everything like that. It, it does nothing to team harmony. I'm going to go for Salford. I, 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 yeah, Salford, 26 20 in favour of the Red Devils for every reason you just gave, Mark. As, as much as I want the big league to try and kind of claw some ground back on you, I just don't see it. I think Salford, I agree with you. And I also pick Salford for this one in sort of a hope that they get into the top. The top eight, and it's sort of a another northwest team in, in the top eight it, potentially. We'll, we'll see. Um, okay. Yeah, that, I think it's a fair way to look at it, isn't it? With the way Leeds are at the moment. Okay, Warrington against Hull FC, the top two, the big clash. The yeah. it's been moved to Sky this game, and everyone will want to be watching this one. I. I'm so excited for this game. If you saw my piece of paper, Tom, I've written the score over on top of itself about four times, and and I've gone from Hull winning to a draw to Warrington winning, and then and then a different score draw, and and I finally settled on twenty seven twenty six in favour of Warrington because I looked at the draw possibility that I'd written down. I looked at the draw that I'd written down, and I just thought. There's too many players on these two sides that can kick a drop goal, so I'm going to go with a drop goal, at least one being made, and, I'll, and I, think, I figured the home side's probably going to nick it as an edge. I made some notes on these when you sent me the email to last night, and underneath it I've got Warrington 31, Hull FC 30, so we've mostly got the same way on that as well. I just think home advantage edges it slightly. I think maybe Warrington hard are slightly more game breaky than, than the Hull FC's, but that's really it. I struggle to separate the starting pack. I certainly struggle to separate the hookers, although, you know, to be fair, the Hull FC barely have one hooker in those 80 minutes, but Warrington have no left up at hooker if Brad Dwyer's playing. Um, the three quarters are very, very similar to one another. I perhaps prefer Jamie Shaw to Stephen Rashford at fullback, but I just think at home, Chrissy Sandow, that sort of, you know, that kind of role that Warrington are on. If this was at the KC Stadium, if this was at the K, Tom, I'd go the other way by one point. But I'm going to go home. I'm going to go Warrington 31 30. Yeah, and do you know what? We say that, and I'm thinking the same thing, but these two sides over the last couple of years. It's actually gone the other way, hasn't it? Last season, didn't Salford, yeah. didn't uh, Warrington win at at the KC by a point and then lose at home by a point? It's going to be an exciting game either way. I just try and not bump the home thing on this one. Yeah, I, I, I've... I love what's going on at home. And actually, overall, I would share the whole, yeah, through the playoffs. I just fancy my anything for this. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's going to go the same way. I think the only chance Hull FC have got is when Warrington go through their interchanges. If they can, if they could get some sort of purchase into the game at that stage, maybe. Yeah. But like, basically, you're relying on the player who comes on for Chris Hill having a shit performance, and you can't be relying on that to win a game, I suppose. Okay, Saturday, Catalan, Saint Helens. What do you reckon? Is that Catalan sometimes have lacked that killer instinct this season and not 